is it permissible to hold the Quran and read from it during prayer? So the month of Ramadan is coming up and we often have this question specifically in the month of Ramadan, uh, especially for Salat al-Taraweeh, where people uh, would want to follow the Imam and you know they find it difficult to, to simply listen and follow the Imam in that way and they prefer following the Imam with a Mus'haf in their hands and following and reading at the same time. And then, of course, you have the other situation where a person would like to perform Salat al-Taraweeh or even any other Salah for that matter. They, 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 they haven't memorized enough of the Qur'an to satisfy how much they would like to recite in the Salah. So they would like to hold a Mus'haf, a copy of the Qur'an in their hand or even a tablet or a phone and read from that. Is this permissible according to the Shafi'i school? So the Shafi'i scholars discussed the permissibility of holding a Mus'haf in Salah under the section dealing with excessive movement in prayer. In uh, Al-Hawi, Imam Al-Mawardi, he concluded that contrary to the Hanafi school, reciting from a Mus'haf and turning its pages while in prayer is not considered excessive movement and thus does not invalidate the prayer. In other words, the only a real issue in terms of holding something in the prayer for the Shafi'i school is that you know would it not would it not constitute excessive movement because three consecutive um, very clearly discernible movements would invalidate the prayer. So is this considered excessive? Is this considered consecutive? So according to Imam al-Mawardi in the, the Shafi'i school, he says, no, it does not, as opposed to the Hanafi school. So you may have heard uh, an answer to this question saying that it, it's not valid and it's not allowed. In all likelihood, that would be the opinion from the Hanafi school and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Specifically, he says, it is permissible that he recite from a mushaf in the salah and his prayer will not be nullified. Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala, however, considered this person's prayer to be invalid since the turning of pages is considered excessive movement. Imam al-Mawardi then goes on to say, this is incorrect according to him, as the invalidity of the prayer could either be on account of looking in the mushaf or the turning of the pages. He says, we know that it is not an account of looking since the prayer of the one who looks in a mushaf before him, uh, example, on a stand or you know on a shelf or something of the like, uh, that would be valid. And the turning of the pages is not excessive, continuous movement, as I explained, you know, consecutive movements, due to the long intervals between turning. And accordingly, this person's prayer, the one holding and looking into a mushaf, is valid. Some of the other concerns uh, that people may have is, you know, so what do I do with the mushaf during the other postures of the prayer? Now, there are ways and means around this. The one is you have a very small mushaf and you place it into your into your the pocket of your thobe. Um, before you go into ruku and sujood, uh, as long as this does not amount to excessive movement. The other s solution that I've seen is people having a small stand next to themselves where they place it on the stand in a very, in a very fluid way when they go into ruku, for example. But the best solution that I've seen, if you really want to do this, is actually to use not the actual mushaf, but to use a digital form thereof. Uh, and this in, in and of itself has issues. We're not discussing that at the moment. But that would require less movement and would obviate the need for, for having to do something with the mushaf out of respect for it because you, you don't want to place it onto the ground or even lower than yourself when you need to go into ruku and sujood. That said, because of the ikhtilaf on this matter, Right? Because of the ikhtilaf in this matter and because we are living in an ummah where we, we are often troubled by you know, small issues such as this, it's probably best, and Allah knows best, but it's probably best that you don't practice on this particular view uh, where, where you subject yourself and others to doubts and to, uh, to tashwish, you know, to, to disturbing others. You may, you may upset someone who, who thinks that it's absolutely prohibited because that's what they heard. Uh, you may upset someone who follows the, the madhab of Imam Abu Hanifa, uh, not knowing that there's ikhtilaf. You may upset an elderly person who has never seen this being done before or who doesn't know that it is, it is allowed. So if you are going to practice, I would say practice it with wisdom, uh, with hikmah, do it in a way that does not that does not uh, cause any issues and uh, don't turn something, you know, that would technically be a rather small issue into something huge. I think it's very important that we apply wisdom throughout. Uh, and to conclude, 
The same reasoning that was mentioned by Imam al-Mawardi was later upheld by two of the jurists and commentators of the Minhaj, uh, that's namely Imam al-Ramli and Khatib al-Shirbini. Uh, and then they said regarding, regarding his opinion, they, they basically agree. Uh, regarding which hand one should keep the Mus'haf in prayer, uh, there's no one who specifies exactly how to do this. So any way that you can do it without causing any excessive movement uh, would be fine, bi'idhin Allah ta'ala. And uh, again, I would say, do apply wisdom, do apply hikmah in this regard, and don't cause any issues uh, if it's not required to do so. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah